Welcome, Sojourners. You have found yourself a cozy place here at Sojourners Awake. I'm Jonathan, and this is our production of The Adventures in Lundwood Ruins. The Adventures of Lundwood Ruins is a campaign that I myself have written. You can find it for purchase at www.sojournersawake.com forward slash shop. And I tried it out with a couple of my friends. This is a first time Dungeons and Dragons experience with brand new players. And I think it went really well. The adventure begins as a classic rescue situation deep within the mountains with plenty of adventure and of course conflict along the way. Will the Sojourners rescue the Dwarven Princess, or will they get lost in Lundwood Ruins? And so for now, our story continues. And so for now, our story continues. The Captain of the Guard stands impatiently in his office. He looks out the window over the citadel of Andorra nestled in the mountains on the kingdom's western and southern border. Papers requesting immediate military aid litter his desk. A nervous scholar fumbles through his books while adjusting his oversized spectacles and wiping sweat off his tangled hair. Mariella, you stand in the room waiting for the captain to speak. The war has put the city on high alert, and between the rationing of supplies and the emergency drills, your life has been pressed by much activity until today. You were called to the captain's quarters to be paid for a mission that would cover three months of your living. Suddenly, Arave, you walk in late. The captain gruffly exclaims, Good. Now we can begin. He looks to each of you and introduce, this is Djokovic, a scholar of Andorra. Djokovic, if you would please explain to these two mercenaries why their aid is being requested. Do so quickly because my time is precious. Djokovic sits up and says, well, yes, exactly. Um, we have received a couple visions that in the first female dwarf has been born, I mean, rather spawned out of the mountain in uh, the first time in 500 years. And, uh, well, you would know this could be quite important because the dwarven people have almost ceased to exist, nearly gone extinct, and this uh, dawn of the, of the female species would uh, mean much for the dwarven people. And uh, But the only problem is she seems to be some sort of stasis, some sort of limbo. And uh, the reports and the spies are very fuzzy and the visions are very unclear. And so, um, well, we are requiring you to go in and investigate and, and the captain interrupts and prove that these theories are correct. I do not have time to be sending whole squadrons of soldiers to go gallivanting through the mountains to God knows what horrors lie in the Lundwood Mountains. But we can afford to send three. The scholar then pipes up, who's the third? The captain acknowledges. The scholar says, oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I am just a researcher. I don't think that I should be the one to go. You have documented the vision. Arave, Mariella will accompany you. Make sure you make it out alive. Make sure you locate the location of this female species. Find out what is causing her to be stuck in limbo. Bring back the report. And then he looks over at the two of you and says, and bring back the scholar alive if you can. Djokovic nearly wets his pants. And he looks <laughs> to each of you. And so I'd ask, at this moment, Mariella, how do you appear so that we can have a visual image of your character? Well, say you just have kind of like raggedy hair, clearly looking a little, little, little worn down. Like I just have been through some things and, uh, but you know, 
eyes are shining, ready to go. Like, Captain, I'm here, sort of a thing. And Arave, how do you appear? Yes, I am um, a little bit stoic. My arms are crossed. I'm standing kind of uh, like spread feet, you know. I'm I'm kind of all business, but I don't really care too much. Um, I've been sent on this job, so I'm just kind of waiting to see what's happening so we can get on with it. Yakovich then drops his book to the ground, nervously picks it back up, and says, well, have either of you um, ever been to the Western Mountains before? Do you, uh, are you able to navigate through the caverns and the mountains? Have you even seen Lundwood ruins? Well, not exactly, but that seen does many not, things before. <laughs> that inspires no confidence at all. <laughs> <laughs> I've traversed many a mountains and this one can't be any different than the others. <laughs> he looks to the elf. May 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 I ask how old and experienced you are, Elethrian lady? He greets you actually with a form of respect to the Elethrians who saved his people from bondage. Yes, I've lived 111 years this past spring. Uh I'm known among my people as able to withstand many trials. And I've seen several wars, and my, <laughs> my durability, my durability, <laughs> my durability has caused me to gain the respect of the council that sent me. So at this moment, he looks to each of you to see which one will inspire the most confidence in this nervous scholar. So each of you will roll a charisma check. The highest number is the winner. <laughs> this is the um, 20 D20. Yeah, Chunky Boy, first roll of the game is just to see who is going to win over his favor. So I have an 11, but I have a plus twos. Is that right? Yeah, indeed. So 13. 13. And I also have an 11, but I have a minus three. Ah. ah. And that's about what I thought. He then looks over to the Elite Three and he says, Well, well, well that, that does make me feel better then. He stands a little bit closer to you, Arave, and says, I suppose with your guidance and uh, and leadership, um, you will get us through to the Lundwood ruins and you will help us find this dwarf and bring magic back into the Dwarven Kingdom. This will be nice. And uh, a passing glance looks at Marielle and says, and, and uh, oh, yes, it will be nice to have some protection along the way as well. Don't worry, I got your back. <laughs> the captain then says, well, then get out of my face and report back as soon as possible. Oh, here. Uh, at this point, he hands, he looks at Marielle and, and says, oh, which uh, squadron do you report to again? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm in the military. Special uh, very forces. good. Yeah, very good. Excellent. He sees your badge and he hands you the communication device by which you are able to communicate back and forth through him. It's a small handheld rock. You can add that to your inventory. The Citadel of Andorra sits on the borders, the southern and the western border of Tetherna, so it is constantly being berated on both sides from the wilds of the mountains and the southern kingdom's attacks. Nevertheless, the city is at your disposal and although urgency is required, you have a few hours to make some final preparations before you go into this dangerous mission. The scholar, Djokovic, follows at your coattails. Arave, how do you proceed? You can come with me. What's his name, Djokovic? Djokovic. You can come with me. We need to get something to eat, but don't get any ideas. You're carrying your own books. Uh, of course, I wouldn't dream of it. Uh, yes, there's actually a special um, turkey place over here. They sell dried turkey that we could bring along and everything. I could store my pack and everything. I had an iron ration once. It was mostly just fat and protein. Very greasy. Hard on the stomach. But uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Am I boring you? I, do, I tend to talk a lot about it. I haven't been around an Alethrian in a very long time. And um, I was wondering if we could possibly steal away a little bit. Um, perhaps when Mariella is keeping watch and we could talk about some insights that you might have into the universe. 
Um, I would greatly love to sit under your tutelage. And at this moment, he's buying the turkey legs, just talking to you and jabbering on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that food sounds fine for you, but I've brought my own sustenance from my people. Oh, fantastic. Yes, I wouldn't expect a proud Alethrian to be squatting down to the low likes of these uh, fine turkey legs. Hey, man, these are good turkey legs. <laughs> I think um, they look great. <laughs> <laughs> Mariella, you can add 10 turkey legs to your rations. Yes. <laughs> and Arave, um, what special foods would you bring? You can bring 10 of them. I would bring a special flower juice that only takes a couple drops to rehydrate me. Um, I have a vial of that. Um, I also have dried petals from the same flower to use as seasoning. I love uh, that. Oh my gosh, that's great. And I have to think of 10 things. No, no, no. You have 10 of those. Oh. That's great. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's only seasoning and liquid. <laughs> but the, I, I love the I love the uh, efficiency of it. That's very cool. That's yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. I'm stealing that for sure. You okay, know, great. I'm going to give it. you a, I'm going to give you a luck token for that. You just invented a new food. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. All right. And Mariella, how do you respond? How do you proceed and make preparations before your adventure? Well, um, I got my turkey legs. I'm gonna sharpen my sword. Probably need like a tent or something like that. Tent? Mm. Indeed, yeah. yeah. You bring a tent enough for a, we'll just say a camping set in your inventory. And I like that you incorporated your weapon. So I'm gonna say, um, in preparation for your weapon, you're gonna you, since this is how you spend your time. It's gonna be a little difficult though, so I would like you to make a dexterity check, six or higher. If you are successful, you get a bonus to your weapon. Um, with the d20, right? Indeed, dexterity. Uh, ten minus three, so seven. Oh, oh, right. seven is higher than six. Fantastic. So what you're gonna do in one of the skill bubbles, you're gonna add a plus two. This just reminds you that anytime you do damage, that sword is going to do plus two damage in addition to the dice roll. Cool. For both of my swords or just one? Well, I for guess both. they fight together, huh? Yeah, for both of them. It's, it's like... After three days of traveling through the mountains, Djokovic finally leads you to a doorway in the cliffside. Your ponies are gathered nearby with your supplies required for a mountain journey. Djokovic leans up against the mountain out of breath. For up here in the mountains, the air is a little thin. Immediately you see upon this door four symbols, a flame of fire, a wave of water, breath from a cloud and a strong mountain peak. The door is shut. At this point, Arve, Mariella, what questions might you have about this scene so that we may build it together? Has this door been recently opened? As you look around, you can see that the door itself is completely shut. There is no sign of it being, of dirt being disturbed. There's no sign of breaking and entering at all. Mariella, what is your question as you perceive? And you're kind of taking in the information right now. Just because I simply didn't describe it doesn't mean it's not there. I just simply stated what's obvious. Let's see how curious you are. What question? Is this like a portal? Is this a portal? Uh, as you look around, Mariella, that might be difficult for you to guess. So I would ask you to make an intelligent, a wisdom check. I don't know if you would know what a portal looks like. Uh, one plus four. A natural one plus four. So it's a natural one means you don't get to add any modifiers. And it goes the same for a twenty. Oh, too bad. One is automatic. Uh, one is automatic danger. And so here's what happens. <laughs> Interruption. Mariella, you go to investigate this, questioning in your mind, wondering if this is some kind of portal, when suddenly this dark, heavy green gas 
begins to seep around your feet. Um, immediately, your feet start to tingle as your nerves begin to numb. The ponies begin to stamp and go nervous. Djokovic goes over to the ponies and says, Not now, we're trying to concentrate. He notices nothing. Arave, Mariella, you notice nothing of this green gas, yet it starts to seep all around the area. Possibly because the sun is starting to go down. At this point, Arave, you have as much information as you can take in at this moment. How do you respond? I don't see the green gas. No. I say, well, obviously, Mariella, you can't open the door. We need to see if Djokovic knows what language is on the outside of it. Uh, yes, this does um, not appears to be dwarven runes, um, and I am proficient in understanding the dwarven language. Um, that's why I'm here. But this is a very strange combination. He begins to speak some words. Nothing happens to the door. Now, why don't you roll a d4? That is how many rounds it's going to take before the gas begins to paralyze you. Uh, four. Four. You got a little bit of time, so the timer is ticking. Can I, like, uh, alert them to the issue at hand? To the issue that your legs feel numb? Yeah. You may do that. That's all you know right now. Okay, so I, I don't see the gas either, then. And that, that is because you rolled the one. It's just a classic failure of senses. So this creature gets to sneak up on you. Yes, I'm sorry. But your legs are numb. That's all you know. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, guys, my legs feel kind of funny. Well, we've been walking a long time. And we know you're not very light on your feet, so... Right? You actually have low dexterity, so... It's different than usual. <laughs> this is... I, I don't know. Like, I've, I've walked a lot before. Feels a little different this time. Can you step away from the door? Can you back up? Come back here? Mariella, when you do that, you notice that your feet are beginning to get better the further you move away from the door. Hey, actually, this is kind of helping. Well, thanks, guys. You're a lifesaver. <laughs> Seems like we have to we have to assess this from a little bit of a distance. How do you proceed? The door remains shut. Djokovic is thumbing through his notes, taking his sweet time to open this door. Arve. It's getting dark. I think we need to find a place we feel safe enough to camp and maybe light a fire if possible. That seems wise. Uh, how far do you camp away from the door? I think we still need to be able to see it. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to go too far. Okay, so we'll say within within one dice roll. Say that. What do we have to do? Roll a dice? No, no, no. I'm thinking, all right, so you begin setting up your camp. You build the tent and everything, and you have the campfire setting. Djokovic is busy going through his notes. Um, in order to contribute to this challenge, uh, Mariella, how would you proceed? I mean, Mariella's kind of curious that if she walks close to it, if her legs are going to go numb again. So, yeah, I walk right. close to Mariella, you start walking over there, and as soon as you get to the door, you see... Um, let's see if you can get it. Make a wisdom check. It needs to be a 12 or higher. 11 plus 4, 15. When you see the rune, suddenly it clicks in your mind that spoken words would not do at all. This requires some sort of physical element to be bonded with each symbol in order to open the door. It's in fact rather quite simple. As this revelation comes to your mind, you suddenly feel your legs becoming numb once again. In order to keep from passing out, you have to roll a constitution check, 12 or higher. Six. Mariella. Oh, oh uh-oh. <laughs> Mariella, you suddenly have this realization and then your body just goes limp and your whole body begins numb and tingling. You are unconscious and vulnerable. Arave, how do you respond? Can I do a magic? Yes, you may. Is it a waste to do a magic right now to, to create some light so we can see better what's going on? Well, you you did see Mariella just collapse in front of the door. Right. Yep. If you want to bring light to the situation, absolutely, that will affect it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do 
do with my light magic. Yeah, I rolled a cast. D20, six or higher. Yeah, the D20. I got a 20. A, a 20? Mm. Awesome. Uh, you get a point for that, by the way. Good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Mariella, you get a point too, because you learn from your failures as much as your mistakes. So that natural one was one point. Uh, when you stand up, this elven woman starts, st you stretch out your staff in your hand and you command light to fill up this campsite. It's like a giant spotlight comes out of nowhere and illuminates the door, shining and glistening on the respective elemental symbols. You see Mariella completely lying down in this low lying green gas that is now seeping and creeping all around her body. The ponies have also begun to be slumbered as the green gas has snuck into the campsite. And because you rolled a 20, I'm gonna say that you see there is a troll who is lurking in the corner of the mountains waiting for the paralyzed victim to fall asleep. So he passed gas, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's his weapon, that's how he yes. waylaid unsuspecting mountain victims. Indeed. Uh, I have five sons, okay? I can't hold it. <laughs> and that's Dungeons and Dragons right there. A song series of puns and potty jokes. Okay, carry But on. I want to know, is he surprised by you? So, Arave, you're going to have to roll a d6 and add your initiative bonus. You have to beat a two. Yeah, so I rolled a four, so I have a six. Nice. Yeah, you are not you are not surprised at all. You have the upper hand on the troll. You see that he's lurking sneak creepily in the corner and he's eyeing Mariella at this moment. But as soon as the light brights up, the jig is up. It's no longer a sneaky thing. Um, he looks hostile, at least creepy in the most. But it's your turn. We have entered into combat. Mm. And Mariella is down. Who's the fighter? So right go, team, go. <laughs> so how do how do i do combat the what do you want to do this troll is going to take mariella if you don't mm -hmm. do but yeah, he's yeah, kinda, yeah. he is definitely like i mean he's he's been lurking in the corner and you just flipped on all the lights so mm -hmm. it definitely has cool. startled him it startled him for a minute so it's kind of random as to what's going to happen but okay, you at it. least have the first initiative and Djokovic mm -hmm. is going to go immediately after you okay so I'm going to grab Mariella's sword. Nice. And not not try to like attack him maybe, but just let him know, like, if you don't back off, you're gonna get it. I like it. I like it, you rush over and grab the sword, sticking it towards him. And I would say you're not in close reach. You're, you are pretty far away from like 10 feet away from each other. And he's kind of up on the mountainside. He's got a rock between them, but you've got this like blade pointed at him. I want to know, does he think he can take you? You're going to have to roll a charisma check. It's going to have to be a 12 or higher. And that's off, off the d20? Yeah. I got an, ooh, I got an eight plus two, so it's only a 10. 10, he looks at you, he looks at Marielle, he looks at Djokovic, and he is not convinced. He is snarling and spitting, and you can see that he also has something in his hand, mm -hmm. uh, a large, sharp rock that he's ready to throw at your head. Djokovic's turn. I think Djokovic is gonna hide. <laughs> oh, shoot, all right. <laughs> Djokovic is going to squeal, he's going to hide, he's going to duck behind and say, Oh no, there's trolls! He says, and then he's going to say, Mariella, wake up! At that point, Mariella, it is your turn. Will your body be able to shrug off this horrible paralytic gas? You have to roll a constitution check 12 or higher to wake up. 16 plus Yes. <laughs> You're able to fight through the paralytic gas. You realize this horrible troll fart has knocked you down. You see... Arave standing over your body with one of your blades in your hand and you see the horrible, snarling, green, ugly, boarded face of a troll lingering over you. And it is your turn. What would you like to do? Well, I'll pop up and bring my other sword out and we'll try one more time to scare him off. <laughs> All right, roll a charisma check because you've come back from the dead. I'm gonna make it a nine or higher. Five minus three. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I don't know 
up with the right people for this job. All right. Would you would you I feel score? Like I should have just attacked. Yeah. Would you just would you score? Uh, two. <laughs> A two. Okay, here's what happens. You stand up and just yell and scream, holding one blade, but your legs are still a little wobbly. So you just collapse <laughs> to your knees a little bit and you're still shaking a little bit. The troll is not convinced. He thinks he can take both of you. He is probably about eight feet tall um, and he's he's just going to gamble. So he is going to jump down. I think he's going to attack Arave first. Uh, he's very much aware that you are a caster and he doesn't want any magic funny business on his hands. Mm-hmm. So the way I like to do D&D is let you guys roll as often as possible. So instead of my monsters rolling to attack you, I tell you what the monster does, and then you tell me how you respond to defend yourself. So the troll jumps down. He's actually going to actually he's going to jump to his feet. He is now in uh, close reach of you, but he's going to throw the rock at you, Arave. Big old chunky, sharp rocks at your head. How do you respond to that? I am going to... Did I lose one energia point when I cast that other spell? Yes. Do I have to keep track of that? Yes, please. I'm going to use my light power again. Okay. To make him blind. Nice. All right, so roll to cast intelligence. Uh, It's going to be a 12 or higher, though. You're in combat. Ah! Five plus one is six. Ooh, the rock hits you in the head instead. Uh. You lose your energia point, and you're going to take rock damage. Uh, lucky for you, it's only a d4. I'm going to roll the dice. Three points of damage as it strikes you across the face. He is going to use his second action. He's going to run over, and I think he's going to backhand Mariella off to the side to get that pointy blade away from you. How do you respond to that? Uh, you going to parry I'd, off? Yeah. So yeah. Use your uh, strength yeah. then, 12 or higher. 12. Nice, on the dice, because you used a weapon, you get to roll damage. Roll a d6. Four. He takes four points of damage. He is four out of 15. Grazes across his hand, he shrieks back as he's tried to hit you, and he is still engaged at this point, but it is now round two. Arve, your turn. So I didn't blind him. It didn't work that because I rolled so low. Yep. It's like that. the spell. I mean, yeah. And I, I ruled that the rock actually hit you and that's why the spell didn't go off. So. Got yeah. it. Okay. And then do, how do I gain inertia back? Sleeping. sleeping. <laughs> Meditating, oh. sleeping, studying. Yeah. When does that happen? How do you decide to do that? You are the one who decides? No, you tell me. I mean, I think right now would be a bad time to do it. But. <laughs> I was going to lay down and go to sleep. <laughs> now, I got hit in the head. I just I'm woke tired. up. It's your turn now. <laughs> yeah. And typically, okay. I mean, in the wild, you'd have to find like a place that is comfortable, safe. You know, got it. Um, you can sleep in dangerous places, but you'll take points of trauma, things like that. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. It's my turn. And he's. It's now your turn. Yeah. He's close range to you both. Djokovic is just kind of hiding somewhere. Yeah. He's... Oh, he... oh, can I say anything about it? Yes, you may. Okay, Djokovic is on his hands and knees hiding nearby. And I am going to take my staff and shove the troll in the chest because he'll trip over Djokovic, who's just cowering in the dark. Oh, right? I love it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right, go for it. So you're going to do a strength check. Okay. But because Shoot. you, because you like, you positioned him around Djokovic, uh, I'm gonna make it a nine or higher because you're using okay. leverage. <laughs> I got a three minus four, so it's a nine. No. I'm gonna say, oh, that's bad. As you, yeah, as you push him, the troll just grabs hold of the staff, and he's like yeah. intimidating and laughing at you. Um, he's probably gonna flip you over on his turn, but it is Mariella's turn. Djokovic remains hiding in the corner. Okay, so oh, I'm gonna go for his hands and try to make him let go. Over staff. Nice. Uh, nine or higher strength check. Five. A five. All right. <laughs> We're the worst. <laughs> I'm gonna say that it's sleeping gas. Good. That sleeping gas is still getting at you and everything, and almost like the tendrils of green gas reach up around your hand and make you go numb a little bit, and it causes you to tremble and shake. Oh. Um, you do not even make contact with him. Yikes. Did you add your special sword bonus to your damage when you hit this troll? Uh, no, I did not. So you rolled a four and then you get to add how much? 
Uh, plus two. Okay, so it should have been six. Got it. Six out of 15. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, it is, it is his turn. He gets two actions. I think the first action is he's going to grab the staff and do like a, a flip and throw Arave over his shoulder. So Arave, I don't think you get to res... If you don't do anything special, I'm just going to make it a strength check for you to resist. Well, I can do something to resist. Anything else you can do. Otherwise, he's just going to throw you over his shoulder. Yeah, um, since he's holding on to my staff like this, mm-hmm. I would use my magic again with oh. holy fire and shoot it out right to his face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's easier. Intelligence, 12, uh, nine or higher, because you're close range. Intelligence, nine or higher. Eight plus two, ten. It is successful as he goes to throw you over. You just boom, like open open barrel shotgun in his face. Now you roll your d10 uh, as you open fire your staff in his face. Roll your d10. Go for that 10 damage. Eight. Eight points. Boom! From six to eight, he's at 14 out of 15 health. It's just like blasts open his face. His jaw is fried. He's at one hit point. He is stumbling backwards, and he indeed lets go. On his second action, I think he is going to turn tail and run like, to get another victim, Mariella. But, but if he's stumbling backwards, doesn't he still stumble over Genovich? <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, so he like falls over and lands on his back. Djokovic is cowering under these packs. Now he's under a stinky troll leg. Uh, <laughs> I think the troll is going to then take out a piece of his flesh and he's gonna toss it at your eyeballs, Mariella, in retaliation. How do you respond? Man, I feel like I would just block with my swords and then like dive towards him. <laughs> All right, you're gonna parry it off with a strength check. Otherwise you take damage, go for it. 12 or higher. 15. It is, you just smack aside the flesh um, and I'm gonna skip real quick cause you're in like mid motion. Mariella, make your final move. And whoosh, try to stab Dan right on him. So he is helpless and defenseless, so it's just a 12 or higher. You just can't roll a one. 18. 18, you slam the sword in his chest. He immediately goes lifeless and limp. Djokovic then quietly pokes his head between the legs and says, is it over yet? (laughs) Well, he is dead. As I wipe off my sword. (laughs) Good job. Always clean your sword. Thanks. Indeed. Every story comes to an ending, so for now, we must conclude. Thank you for listening, Sojourners. Your attention will not go unrewarded. And we look forward to continuing and we look forward to continuing this adventure in part two of Lundwood Ruins. This has been a production of Sojourners Awake. For more information or products, visit www.sojournersawake.com forward slash shop. Background music and ambiance provided by Tabletop Audio. Find them at www.tabletopaudio.com. And however you choose to sojourn with us, as always, may your story continue. The Adventures of Lundwood Ruins Part 2 We continue the story. Man, I feel like I would just block with my swords and then like dive towards him. (laughs) All right, you're going to parry it off with a strength check. Otherwise, you take damage. Go for it. 12 or higher. 15. It is. You just smack aside the flesh. um, And I'm going to skip real quick because you're in like mid motion. Mariella, make your final move. And try to stab Dan right on him. So he is helpless and defenseless, so two or higher. You just can't roll a one. 18. 18, you slam the sword in his chest. He immediately goes lifeless and limp. Djokovic then quietly pokes his head between the legs and says, is it over yet? (laughs) Well, he is dead. As I wipe off my sword. (laughs) Good job. Always clean your sword. 
Welcome, Sojourners. You have found yourself a cozy place here at Sojourners Awake. I'm Jonathan, and this is our production of the Lundwood Ruins. A few friends and I got together and decided to play through the Adventures of Lundwood Ruins. It's a wonderful campaign setting that I wrote and which you can purchase at sojournersawake.com forward slash shop. And while you're here, I'd like to introduce a little mechanic that I use in the games to make combat more exciting. It's called the auto win and the auto fail. If I ever determine that it is a surefire thing for someone to succeed, I will simply have them roll a two or higher. You can guess that the only way to fail is to roll a natural one. And this honors the timeless natural one's demise. But still, in this case, the character Mariella was going to jump onto the vulnerable troll and stab it right through the heart. I determined as the game master that this was completely an auto win. And so I asked her to roll a two or higher. Of course she rolled an 18 and it is certain that she was successful as the sword plunged deep into the troll's flesh and it died. The flip side to this is if there is an auto fail, if a character is attempting something that is nearly impossible, I ask them to roll a 20 or higher. The character has to roll a 20 on the dice. This allows players to attempt things that are otherwise impossible while still having a very small chance of success. Try this mechanic out for use in your games. And so for now, our story continues. Thanks. Indeed. The troll lies there lifeless. The ponies still get slumbering a little bit, but the paralytic gas has left with the troll and you are left there with the locked door, having gained no real benefit of resting this evening. Djokovic then just throws a stone at the door and says, this dang thing won't open. What's wrong? He slams down his book in frustration. Oh, hey. So right before I passed out, I had a thing. <laughs> we need what do you to mean you had a thing? How, I've been going through these books for th three hours now. Nothing can open it up. It just completely failed. We're, we're at the end well, of our have book. Have you tried putting any of the elements to the door? One that it belongs to. Okay, I have read that children's book before. It's not that, it cannot be that simple. Well, have you tried it yet? Of course not. It's ridiculous. Can I just grab the dirt next to me and chuck it at the mountain? As you do, you throw the dirt at the mountain and the light begins issuing up and you actually hear like a deep dwarven baritone voice issue from the door. Djokovic's mouth just drops open. That was what I was expecting. I see, I, uh, I uh, told you. <laughs> uh, uh, what? Well, what does this mean? He starts looking well, for more supplies. Yeah, so we need water? Do we have water on us? You do. You have a canteen on your side. Tossing the water on the wave, that opens up. Rich tenor sings out in a harmonious tune. And this is beautiful. Wait, what are the other ones? We need fire and then... Fire and a cloud. And a cloud. Can you, can you summon a cloud? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you have, I'm going to say you have never summoned a cloud before, but you can certainly try. I can uh, try. I can try. <laughs> roll a 15 or higher intelligence check. Oh no, am I very intelligent? Mm, hey, that plus one. Oh yeah, 18 plus one, 19. You burn an energia point trying for the first time ever and you actually bring about this windy cloud that mm. dives into the symbol and you have just the fire left so then for fire do we have like glass or anything like that and then you can use your light power through that we could do that or instead of burning up any of my inertia we could just use the flint and steel that jackovich has oh. in his pack <laughs> yeah that's perfect let's do that and jackovich <laughs> actually says like well the embers haven't completely gone out yet and he holds up a firebrand I guess I could help out somehow. And then he takes the firebrand over to the door. And at that point, all four part harmony of the dwarven voices sing and the doorway creaks open heavily. It is the Lundwood ruined door, yes. 
Djokovic asks, do we, we should bring our animals, correct? You have two little ponies, pack ponies, with all your supplies. I feel like we should leave them in a sheltered place if we can find a safe place. Be we have to see what's down there at least a little bit before we bring them down because who knows if they'll fit, who knows if they'll make too much noise or if there's a precipitous drop or something. That's fair. You leave your ponies uh, in a sheltered spot along with the majority of your supplies. As you walk through these tunnels, you see the dwarven architecture and the design of these master craftsmen. Finally, you enter into an everlasting torchlit room. Your eyes adjust to the light, and you see many hand-carved caverns of stone leading to a massive hallway. This giant hallway is guarded by a large stone dwarf who raises a hammer over this pathway. All the torches in the room cast a massive shadow on this 12 foot tall statue, which casts a dark shadow on the pathway through the door. Djokovic starts thumbing through his books. As you stand in this room, what questions might you have? Arave, Mariella. Do you have anything in your books that show what this place is? Is that what we're asking Djokovic question? Uh, no, you're asking your senses right now. You're telling me what you're paying attention to. Hmm. You, so you walk into um, the room. It's a nice square room. At okay. the end of this square room is a massive 12 foot hallway, but there's a large 12 foot tall dwarf with a hammer over the doorway. Oh, I see. In this room, this is the only room that is lit by plenty of light. So there is purposely casting a shadow on the doorway. Mm -hmm. You can see that the pathway leading up to the doorway is completely wreathed in shade, unlike the rest of this room. Mm. Uh, there is also a dwarvish insignia at the top of the pathway, and Djokovic says, oh, I translated it. That says only dwarves may pass through here. So, Arve, what do you pay attention to? Well, I want to know what's in the rest of the room. I want to know if there's anything around. So, are there any other statues or are there any, like, crevices in the walls or any other doorways that we're not seeing that are maybe small or trapdoors in the floor? Yeah, as you look around this room, you immediately notice that there are creature made crevices in the walls. Something slimy and sluggish has been passing in and out of this room, leaving a sticky residue on the floor, spiraling around. Um, as you get closer to the, the slime, you notice it has a very acrid, demonic stench to it. Mariella, what do you pay attention to? Can I tell if like, the dwarf is enchanted or something? Uh, immediately you know, and you've probably seen something like this before, this large stone statue is triggered to slam down. You can see that there's a hinge on the hammer. Um, as perhaps as you pass your hand through the shadow, the hinge starts to move. Djokovic then calls out, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Last time I checked, you're not a dwarf. We've got to figure out a way to get through that shaded hallway without triggering a two-ton sledgehammer on top of your head. And then he shows you a sketch in his drawing, and there's these splattered remains. Now that you're looking at it, there's bits <laughs> of bones at the floor, crushed, ground. And they really captured it all, didn't they? So I think our only way might be to go into the one of those crevices instead. How uh, how big are these crevices in comparison to us? Like, can we crawl through them? You can crawl through them with great difficulty. You see that they're very, they're pretty bad. Uh, they're very rough and uneven, but a good sledgehammer to the wall will reveal a little bit more of a tunnel. Indeed, you could crawl through it. Could we use the ponies in any way to 
once the dwarf hammer was triggered, is there room to get around it when it's down? Like if we sacrificed a pony to let put a pony in, let him get smashed, and then when it was down, we could scoot around. <laughs> uh, as you study this, you see that once the hammer is down, there's no way to go around the hammer because it fits perfectly in the door but one could easily climb up on the hammer and then hop off on the other side. Mm. It would be about a, like a good 10 Back foot climb. Bones? Yeah. What was the question? Mariella. Oh, I said, should we, should we do it? Should we sacrifice bone? How soon does the hammer go back up? How much time would we have to climb over? Oh, we have two ponies. <laughs> You well, haven't you haven't tested it yet, so I will let you do an intelligence check. Do we even need to? Do we even need to trigger the hammer? Or can we just climb up the back of it and like hop over? Uh, you you could, yeah, you could not. The only way to get through the door would be go through the door. The statue and the hammer on the side of the door. We probably can't trigger it by just chucking a, like a coffee cup or something if you try no okay. yeah maybe we try... can get one of the slime things sacrifice that instead then we don't have to lose our pony you do but notice that take... there, there is no slime around the shade mariella they don't go near it mm -hmm. but can we take the ponies with us if we i mean what are we going to do with them if we don't like are they any use to us anyways can we take them they can't even if the hammer goes down and we climb over, the pony can't climb over. Where, what are we going to do with the ponies? Unless we go back out and go somewhere else. <laughs> are we going forward? That's true. Well, wait, do we know how deep this is? Like, is this one of the, like, is this a cavern that we just go in and we'll get something at the end and then come back out? Because in that case, we'll get, like, it'd be nice to have the ponies to get back. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if it's like a cave that actually goes to a different place, then yeah, there's not much point in backtracking for them. So we're hopeful because it's dwarvish. Mm -hmm. But we don't even know if this is where we need to go, right? I mean, we just kind of happened upon this place. Djokovic says, no, this is certainly the place that we were supposed to go. It's somewhere near the end of the temple. And uh, if my sketches are correct, the... Mm -hmm. The blueprints tell us that, yes, we were on the right path. So then this is a temple that we'll, like, come back out of after. It is... We can search through for more exits. That is possible. Uh, but this is a bottlenecked area. That is indeed true. And it's very typical of dwarves to put this level of security in their system. That way they could pass through and bring their guests in their own shadow. In the shadow of the dwarves, you are safe, as the saying goes. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we don't have one. <laughs> could we catch like a rabbit or something? We could try, but it has to be a living thing to trigger the trap. Uh, How does it know if you're a dwarf? Is it very discerning? Could we cut off the pony's mane and tail and make beards? <laughs> I, I have no idea. We could try. Uh, I, we could. Find a rabbit, we could make a bearded dwarf. A bearded rabbit. <laughs> Send our bearded rabbit through. Yeah. <laughs> <Good luck. laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's worth a check for if there's anything else living that we can sacrifice before we resort to the ponies. And then if we can't find anything, let's use them. If and we the door, does it stay open? Can we get can we go in and out of the door that we just came in with no yes. problems? Yes. Yes, you can. All right, Mariella, you go searching for a living creature. Roll a wisdom check to see if you can spot one in the middle of the night. 11 plus four. You indeed 15. are successful. There's a small goat with a beard. Mm. Perfect. Uh, you see that it is, it is within your clutches. You're able to lasso it and carry it desperately away back into the corridor. Um, at the top of the hour, Mariella, you bring back this bleeding goat. And uh, Djokovic makes a joke about some scapegoat or something like that. Oh, uh, good one. <laughs> Should we How sleep? You... Yeah, uh, that's probably a good idea because we want you to be at your your best. Yeah. 
Well, there's sign things, so that seems yes. like we don't know if they're right dangerous or not, unless Yarkovich knows something. Arave would know they have a demonic quality to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like the idea of sleeping with something that could be as quiet as something that is slimy. That seems like a very quiet, creepy thing. Yeah. So I'd say we, we should sleep out. In fact, we could go look over where the troll was sitting because maybe he had like a cave or like a little dwelling oh. that we could use now that he's dead. Is he dead or gone? He is dead, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's smart. As you move out through the night, I'm going to say it's about a good two o'clock in the morning. Um, you're starting to get pretty fatigued. As you move up to the cave where that the troll was, you, do, you indeed see that there is a natural cave that smells pretty terrible and uh, has been decorated with various skeletons in a makeshift tea party around an mm-hmm. old casket, old burial, uh, old uh, beer barrel. And uh, there is a sack of supplies the troll has collected. Otherwise, you search around and see that the cave is naturally empty from any kind of beast, except for a few bats in the belfry. So what we can do is take some of my flower petal seasoning and everybody can rub it in their nose, and then that will stop them from having to smell the bad like it. Yeah, sacrifice <laughs> three of those petals. Three out, of, three out of, that's good. Yep, yep. And uh, you won't be vomiting throughout the night. Yep. Um, each of you uh, rest. Yakovich, yeah, does Yakovich need one? Because don't dwarves have like a bad sense of smell or something? I, I'm not a dwarf. Wait, are you? <laughs> we'd, we'd be a good chip if he was a dwarf. <laughs> yeah, if I was a dwarf, I would have gone through the hammer. I'm fine. I, I'm just a regular old guy, 35 years He's old. short, I think. My I'm bad. short. <laughs> easy, easy mistake. <laughs> I am not that ugly. I like is showing. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> All right, each of you sleep. Uh, you are out in the wild, though, so it's going to be a rough night. Um, Arave and Mariella, you only gain back one health point and one inertia um, because you are in the threat of the wild. However, when you wake up, you level up. So I'm going to randomly give you up a nice new skill, and hopefully it's applicable. If each of you would roll a D100 and announce your results. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Once per day, you may roll charisma and pray for a miracle. Being a Lethrian elf, you would pray to Elethria, the elven goddess. She is a star in the sky. So that's one of your features now. You can just call forth on her power to just, like, get you out of a bind. Your goddess strength. Yes. All right, what'd you get, Mariella? Uh, 39. 39. Your weapon effort is maxed out to plus five. That means your sword does a minimum of five points of damage. That's cool. All right, you wake up, and after some rest and recovery, it is now bright and early in the morning. You satisfy yourself with a ration to stay healthy and strong. You proceed back into the room where the hammer is with your goat. And I'm going to ask the Oracle, because I don't know the answer to this. Are there demon slugs in the room when you arrive? Mm. I just rolled a d6 because I don't know. We're going to find out. Are there demon slugs in the room when you arrive? That is a straight no. But there is evidence that they've been here overnight. Mm. Slime is a little more sticky. And you notice that there's like black webbing. Um, something like a cocoon that has been planted on the wall nearby. Otherwise, the hammer is there, the everlasting torches are still casting the shadow. How do you proceed? So, do you think that we should, like, get rid of the steam and slug cocoon thing? Can we grab the torches and light it on fire? Bad idea. The torches do not remove. They are stuck to the wall. Can we build our own torch? You may do that, yes. And you can use the torch as well. 
<laughs> As you light it on fire, it shrivels and squeals and issues out all these dark profanities. I need each of you to roll charisma or take a point of trauma as you hear the cry of the abyss. 12 or higher. I got a 12 plus two. You are able to resist these horrible profanities. Mariella? Eight minus three. Ah, but this horrible language like seeps into your mind and racks you with guilt and shame and fear. And it's just the most awful thing you've ever heard. So you take a point of trauma and we'll take another point of trauma if you encounter this demon again that you have burned. You hear something. I think to he'd be- probably be happy about being lit on fire and be like, oh, this is my favorite. <laughs> you know, like, hell. Like, like where he's at home. <laughs> Just like, thank you. I'm so happy now. Okay, Djokovic, sorry. Djokovic shrugs his shoulders. Mariello, you have a sense that someone is watching you along your shoulder. That doesn't feel great. Well, the shadow sure. lies there. How do you perceive? Sacrificial goat. All right. Um, you lead the goat through. It walks in the wrong direction. <laughs> you lead it back over, and suddenly the hammer falls, and the goat is splattered. Run! <laughs> we should have prepped for this. <laughs> Yeah, we should have. I thought about that. Well, is this a test to see how long it stays down, or are we just going for it right now? You know, that's probably smart. Know. Let's test yeah, that. You don't I mean, know. Could... It is down. It is down. So, but we'd have, we have to get a... another creature to try again. If this, we don't take, we should just go for it. Yeah, let's just run and jump. And worst case scenario, we die. We die. All right, <laughs> you have to get up over, including getting Djokovic over. Yeah. Uh, he, like I said, he is probably not, he's not the most acrobatic. This is going to be a dexterity check for you to leap up the 10 foot ledge and grab on with your fingers. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is difficult. 15 or higher. 20. Arave, you leap up gracefully and live like no problem. Do a three point landing on top of the, um, the hammer. Mariella. Uh, four minus three. Oof. I'm wow, that's yikes. <laughs> Mariella, you actually trip and Djokovic is like, hey, wait, wait, wait for me. And the like the the pendulum like knocks you forward and you smash up against the the uh, hammer. And this round you have not made any progress at all. Arve, uh the hammer is still in place. Yes. You can start you, see- you can start to see the hinge is starting to move. It's gonna mm-hmm. be close. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say, Arve, once you're on top two, you can now see down the hallway that it's smooth sailing and there's a couple caverns on either side. Mm -hmm. Um, You're 10 feet up on the hammer. You're looking down at your companions, but the hammer itself is just a simple hop down on the other side to safety. Mm -hmm. How do you proceed? I don't think I'm strong enough to reach down and grab both of them. I think that... Sorry, I think I have a, I'm going to hop down and go get a dwarf and bring them back because they can walk under and bring friends in. So I'm going to either force him or, or charisma him to help me. So there are no doable things. that's, that's, That's awesome. But you know, there are no more dwarves in the kingdom. No, I didn't know that. I thought we were going to find some. We're we finding the girl dwarf? Yes, yes, because as soon as the female is born, that'll start respawning the the tribe. But we're, but there's only the girl. There's not other dudes down there. We're yep. just looking for one dwarf. Yep. Oh, I thought there were others. There might be, but you have no idea where there are. You haven't seen one in... in okay, all right. Okay, so, let me think. Yeah. I have to jump down on the good side. Yeah. I don't know what will happen after that, but I don't see I mean, how I can. You know that Mariella eat at least gets one more try. You know that much. Yeah. I think we have to try that. I don't know. If it goes badly, we're in trouble. All right. What you going to do? I'm going to leap down 
and the hammer goes back up. Is that right? Or she gets to try again right now. The hammer has not gone back up yet. Nope. I'm going to yell at her and say, um, can you try again? She can. She can at least try one more time, for sure. You know you have that much time. Can she carry Jackovich too? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Jakovich will try too, don't worry. Okay, all right. I say you guys you guys got to try again. All right. All right, Arave, you hop <laughs> on the safe side of the hammer. Mm -hmm. Mariella, Jakovich is ready to jump, like get a running start and jump up. Uh, you are afforded that as well, unless you had something else that you were going to do. Nope, that's, that's right. what I'm going for. All right, 15 or higher. Uh, it's a little easier this time because you kind of get the spatial you, you know exactly how high to jump so it's a 12 or higher uh, I got 10 minus 3 wow 10 <laughs> minus 3 oh my gosh <laughs> Mariella at that point uh, Djokovic is going to try he got a 17 oh good uh, I'm going to say Djokovic gets to <laughs> the top <Without> me. <laughs> <laughs> um Here's what happens. Djokovic starts to jump off on the safe side with Arave as the hammer begins to ascend back into place. Wait, can I run underneath it while it's ascending? <laughs> very quickly. Do it very quickly. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to have to roll ah, 10 or higher dexterity check. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, 12 minus 3. Oh my oh. gosh. Terrible. All right, nine, you slide in and you, like you're diving into home plate and you skid right past the d the remains of the goat. <laughs> you look up and you see the goat head just looking back at you stuck on the hammer. And it slams down. And Arave, you see the dust settle. And when it settles to the ground, you see Mariella lying there without any of her supplies, mm -hmm. except for one sword. Mm -hmm. Marielle, you are alive. <laughs> Thank goodness. But you are, besides the clothes on your body and the sword in your mm. hand, you are destitute. Oh, that means we lost our handheld communication device. Oh. We yep. communicated with the guy back at home with that? Indeed. Mm. But you are alive. We'll figure it out. It's a good thing you could slide on that goat blood that kind of greased the skids for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Sojourners. This is Jonathan with a brief break from behind the screen. You might have heard that I issued out a trauma point for one of the characters. The way I do this is that each Sojourner begins with zero trauma points, which can ascend all the way up to six. Once a player reaches six trauma points, we simply roll a 50-50 chance on whether or not the character is permanently shell-shocked. If the character is permanently shell-shocked, they are essentially dead, retired from the game. If they make it, they reset all the way back down to zero trauma and gain some special abilities and skills. This helps create some kind of tension in that you want to engage in dangerous activities in the game and in the story but you don't want to completely be taken out of the game. Some things that could induce trauma are uh, if a character experiences pain, if a character witnesses someone die in the game, if they see a monster for the first time or engage in their greatest fear. It's just another mechanic um, besides health points that I like to use to create a little more tension in the game. You might wonder how to get rid of these trauma points. Well, rest, recovery, and good dialogue between sojourners. This encourages role play uh, player to player. So I hope you like this mechanic. Anyway, our story continues. The hallway leads you another two days through empty warehouses, places, and courtyards where the dwarves conducted business. Finally, a darkness lingers in one particular room that you can see was once an underground fungal garden. The earth smells strong here, 
but are they? You also recognize that same acrid odor resembling bile and demonic blood. It hangs heavy in the air. Over in the corner of this courtyard, you can see a glowing red embryo attached to the mountainside. It is the one source of light in this room. And inside you see a young female dwarf, her <clears throat> face preserved within the embryo. All around this room, you see sticky black webs, green gas, and in the corner, in the uh, upper part of the mountain, you see three skeletons wearing wigs hanging onto the mountain surrounding the dwarven female. Arve, what questions do you have about this scene? Well, the question I have would be, are all of these, the webs, the slime, the skeletons, are those there because they don't want the dwarf kingdom to survive? Or are they there in order to protect the female dwarf um, from anyone else who might not want the dwarf kingdom. So I want to know yeah. whose side are all of these things on? Oh, you can clearly see that this is an inhibitor to her being born. And this explains much why she is in limbo, unable to be spawned into this world. Mm -hmm. Some Dharmonic presence is keeping her from being spawned, yet she is still preserved inside, safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mariella, what do you pay attention to? I want to know how they feel about light. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. How do demons feel about light? Yeah, like, are they are they shriveling away from the light? Like... Ah, the dwarven light. Yeah. Yes. There is a good birth around this light. Um, I think each of you would know the lore and legends that only once every hundred years, once every one thousand years, dwarves sprouted from the mountain, Charnay's will births forth a female dwarf. Female dwarves are usually are rare, for they possess innate magical sorceress abilities. <laughs> Unlike their brothers and cousins, they do not build things, but they create them. So a female dwarf would be a rare specimen indeed, um, and in the darkest manners, taste delicious to the demon lords. Hmm. One can see that they're simply biding their time, waiting. Now you put two and two together, recognize that the female dwarf has probably put herself in limbo. For she knows that as soon as she enters into this world, unprotected, she is sure to become a feast for whatever foul being is waiting for her. We stand in this room and Djokovic's knees start knocking together and he <laughs> says, Nothing in these books has prepared me for this. This is the will of the malignancy. This is the will of the dark forces of the abyss. We must report back to Captain that they must send squads of legions here. We cannot handle this. Are they? No, I I don't think that's that's the right that's the right answer. I don't think that squads of legions is going to solve the problem because I think that that I can make light. That's, if they all hate light, I think we can get this dwarf out of here now. The embryo out. If I make light, and what are your effects? Um, I don't have magic, I just have my swords. Oh, so swords. I think, yeah. Like if you make light, then I can be the backup in case anyone gets too close. Make sure that you're protected. I okay. Know. And then is, is Yakovich the one then that has to run in and grab the <laughs> embryo if I'm the one making the light? Is that, good? Is that a good idea? Well, oh, yeah, that's right. if, if you make the light and you give her enough of a birth, no pun intended, but she can then be birthed. <laughs> oh. I, 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 would, I would carry her until we're able to get out of this room. Um, do we have the ponies? Yes, we didn't sacrifice them. Good thinking. Okay, good. I can put her on the pony then. Mm -hmm. And uh, if she wakes in time, believe me, she'll be able to bring forth enough light to put all of us to shame. 
This okay. is an incredibly fascinating and wonderful discovery. I'll have to record this, um, but not now. No, not now. <laughs> okay, so I have still nine out of my 11 inertia. Okay. So I want to go big or go home. Okay. I, right? You told me I could do that? You can do that. So you want to spend everything and then collapse? Yeah. Yeah, okay. everything. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say you need at least 40 points. Okay. You're going to roll 9d10. So nine times the d10. Okay. You've got nine. to get at least rack up 40 points in order to create enough light to give enough to keep the demons at bay. Okay, so this is the d10. Wait, wait, wait before you do that, Mariella, you start to see these slugs that are um, have these rat heads popping out of their bodies, nibbling around, waiting for some kind of creature. It's almost actually like a a shell of rat heads and tails on top of this slug. And they're slinking in the shadows. They're waiting and lusting after this egg. And when they see you, um, you take another point of trauma because this is the creature that you burned earlier. However, you see that there, there are 10 points worth of slugs that you have to slay in order to keep them off Arave. Okay? Okay. All right. Arave? Yeah. First, you must cast your spell. It so I have to roll this 10 times. No, just roll a, a d20, 10. Yeah, roll a d20, 10 or higher. 13. You are successful. The magic begins to channel through your body and your staff. The light builds up. Roll the d10 nine times. Go big or go home. Two. Okay. Somebody add. I got it. Yep. Five. Nine. One. Ugh. Two. Five. Nine. Ooh. How many That's rolls 30, my- 39 points. Ah! That was, was that nine rolls? That was, was eight rolls. Eight. eight rolls. Okay. Yes. So all I need, so I can't lose. You cannot lose. Arave, as you start casting this magic, your body starts to <laughs> shake and tremble. Sweat pours down your forehead and your lips begin to quiver. Your staff actually just shatters into pieces, but it creates this natural wave of light and builds up in this room. The, du- the slugs and demons begin to hiss and spit. They charge at Arave, this angel of light. Mariella, it's up to you now. You have to get a 10 or higher strength check to fight them off. 18. 18, you are successful slashing. You need to get at least 10 points of damage. You you automatically get five because of your sword. Roll your d6. Six. What? Yes. Oh, with 11 points, you just hack and slash through these demons with absolute flair and finesse surrounding this beautiful elven woman. You protect her. Quite literally. (laughs) At that point, Djokovic watches as this female dwarf finally has permission to be spawned into this world. Uh, Born as a young teenage dwarf, he pulls her out of this embryo and then puts her on the pony and says it's okay we've got you she blinks smiles and he leads her out mariella hacking at the last of the slugs facing her fears and her trauma arave collapses to the ground all right the light can I grab her? you can grab her you fling her over your shoulder fulfilling your debt you race out of the Lundwood ruins back into the starlight where the sun actually is now blinding, setting over the western hills, creating shadows in the mountains. And you see before you the first female dwarf born in 1,000 years, innately powered by magic. And you are the first to witness her. Arve, your eyes begin opening as you recover from this trauma fully exhausted in your body requiring rest. Without any form of sending stone, you must make the travel back 
but you have the ponies to do so. The companionship and the friendship along the way. And of course, Eliana is alive. And so for now, our story concludes. Every story comes to an ending, so for now we must conclude. Thank you for listening, Sojourners, to this one-shot tryout adventure, Adventures in Lundwood Ruins. If you would like to purchase a copy of Adventures in Lundwood Ruins, you can go to www.sojournersawake.com forward slash shop. Background music and ambiance provided by Tabletop Audio. Check them out at www.tabletopaudio.com. A special thanks to our guests, Heather and Karina, for their participation in this Sojourners Awake production, Tabletop Stories. Thank you for listening, Sojourner, and however you choose to sojourn with us, as always, may your story continue.